What's going on and welcome back to a brand new rebuild and today it's going to be Manchester United using an incredible 4 2 3 one that we have picked up. If you do enjoy the rebuilds on this channel, be sure to leave a like, drop a little subscription and also leave a comment below on the team you want to see rebuild next or a tactic you want to see next. But let's get in to the first season and see what we can do in five years with Manchester United. So we're actually going to jump right into the first season with the transfers done. Now, unfortunately, on FM, you can't always have the transfer window, but it's probably realistic in real life. For the example, we couldn't go out and sign Mason Mount because PSG wanted, not PSG, sorry, um, PSG, Chelsea wanted 180 million for Mason Mount, which obviously we can't facilitate in the first season. But we have done, we have gone over and tried to sign some players that possibly are free on the market in real life and just had a little bit of fun as well. So let's go over to the transfer history right now and as you can see we have got quite a bit of action going in and out so for example this is going to be the key one so it is going to be from this point onwards so We've obviously got Garner, who goes to Everton. We've got Leo goes to Bolton on the free. We've got Donny van der Beek going to Monaco. He's never really going to cut the mustard. He's not really had a great time since being at the club. So he is going to be off to Monaco. Tellez joins him for a fee of 5.5 million. Eric Bailly goes to RB Leipzig for 7 million. A few loan options just to obviously get these players some actual game time and get them out. I'll let you guys have a look at those if you wish to. Going over to some of the actual players that we do decide to bring in. The first, well, the couple we are going to bring in. The, the main one, obviously, is going to be the goalkeeper situation now unfortunately again with fm the transfer windows you can't always offload players that you really want to either so i couldn't actually sell to Haya at all same with harry Maguire couldn't get sold pretty much a lot of players that in my opinion would go in real life if realistically you know De Gea is basically gone in real life. Maguire, maybe not, but De Gea definitely. But unfortunately, we couldn't get that done. So we brought in Justin Bilal from Feyenoord, obviously for 20.5 million. And this guy, again, I'm not guaranteeing he's going to be the, the go-to keeper because to be honest, I want a Costa, obviously from FC Porto, but he is a lot of money on this game and we couldn't, we couldn't buy him. But I thought... Even for now, get this guy in as sort of backup to De Gea so he can learn. And then later down the line, if we want to also add Costa in after we sell De Gea, that's completely fine also. And then we go to West Ham. Now, this signing, in my opinion, I don't think it's going to come to United in real life. Don't get me wrong. Most likely Arsenal now. But he is free on the market. So I thought, Do you know what? We are going to pick him up and get him in this United team because that position is another area we needed. Don't get me wrong. I want to make this very clear, by the way, because I know instantly what United fans will be saying. I did try and sign strikers. I seen him, not having it. I tried to sign Hoyland, not, have, not having it either. Literally, a new contract will not join. So, unfortunately, a couple of signings we couldn't do because of how sort of sometimes this game's perfect, but in other in other aspects, it's really not for rebuilds. But do you know what? We'll, we'll sign him down. We'll sign him on later down the line. We'll sign him on later down the line. It is what it is. But overall, a quite reasonable first season. Obviously, quite a bit of money spent in this first season. A lot of this deal done in installments. But if we go over to the tactics page right now, we can actually see what this team's going to be shaping up like. So it is a 4 2 3 one but it's a lot different. Made by Nap, so shout out to him because he does make some very, very good tactics. And as you can see, it does feature two Volantes, which I'm a massive fan of Volantes in this game. And I'm hoping it works well with this team, as I believe Bryce can play it very comfortably and also can Casemiro. So overall, that midfield is still going to be very, very impressive. We're going to roll that with De Gea, Dallo, Varane, Martinez, Shaw. Pretty much a classic back four. Bryce and Casemiro, Rashford, Fernandez, Sancho and Martial in the first season. Um, in terms of the bench, we, we can go over some players also I want to get rid of. Obviously, I'd love to get rid of Martial if we can get a decent bit of money for him. Um, In that team, other than that, I want to keep everyone apart from De Gea. Um, going over to the bench, I want to get rid of um Maguire. I'll probably let Heaton retire here to be honest. Um, Eric, so we can keep for a little while. Anthony, I'll keep. Um, Lindelof, Iffy. Fred, Iffy. Um, McTominay, Iffy. Wambasaka or Dallow. I'm going to sell one of them realistically. Um, Dean Henderson, he can go. Brandon Williams, he can definitely go if we can get some, something for him. If not, I'm going to try and release the guy, to be honest with you. Garnacho will keep, obviously. Um, and Nathan Bishop will probably let go as well. So overall, there's quite still a lot of players we want to get rid of. But it's just very hard to do in this first season. But we've made some adjustments. We've still got a very good team. This team is easily capable of getting top four, as we've seen in real life. So let's get into that first season and hopefully not fail on that. 
So the first season has been simulated, and let's just say it's not a bad season. Um, I'm really intrigued what we can do in five years of Manchester United. As in the first season, we have won the quadruple, that being the Champions League against Man City, the Premier League, the FA Cup, and the Carabao Cup. Just showing how good this tactic actually is, alongside of a team which is also very good, but probably not the best team in the league. We scored 117 league goals and only conceded 22. Going over to the team stats, we've got to be looking at this as well. We're going to have the most points per game, the most goals at 117, most shots at 862. Also, a very good defensive display and an incredible amount of dribbles made. So, a very good sign in terms of what this tactic actually can accomplish. And going over to the squad, let's go and have a little look at the goals, shall we? It is going to be Marcus Rashford, who I guarantee was playing up top. I guarantee that, um, because at the end of the day, I doubt he would have got that many from the wing. Bruno Fernandes with 35, 17 for Varane. Now, Nap does have the best set pieces in the game. So I will just say that is why he's on 17. I highly doubt he was being pushed up into the Volante role, but um, I guarantee that is where they have come from. Declan Rice with 14, quite a good season as well, picking up some assists as well. Casemiro with 14, 11 for Martial. Garnacho having a great season as well. Ericsson with 10, 7 for Maguire. Anthony with 7, and also 7 for Lissandro Martinez. So a obscene amount of goals from everyone, which we do love to see. And you can see some of this transfer value now. We have got some very, very, very expensive players. In terms of the assists, we've got 39 from Bruno Fernandes thriving in that role. Garnacho with 20, 19 for Sancho, Declan Rice with 16, Anthony with 13, 11 for Ericsson, Casemiro with 11, 8 for Dallo, Rashford with 8 as well. Absolutely tons of different assisters and absolutely fantastic tactic by the looks of it as we are absolutely flying in this league and we can't really complain at all. Talking about the squad though, let's look at the contract situation situation pick the wrong one so we have got obviously 2024 we need to focus on we've got the likes of Aram. we definitely want to get that done um and the likes of Ericsson, Maguire and McTominay and Henderson they're the main ones we've got to focus on because if we can't sell them I don't want them going on the free so I'll give them very short contracts try and keep them at the club obviously we've got a lot to do in 2025 as we've got some real key players going out there and we're quite safe for now for some of the real real star players but quite a bit of business to do in that regard anyway Going into the next season, we have got a total of £59 million to spend if we don't sell anyone. Obviously, we might sell some players, so that could get boosted up. We do obtain 100% of the transfer revenue made. So realistically, we could easily push this up to 100 but in the meantime, it'd be rude not to watch one of these goals, right? As this game looks very, very close, that is actually going to, that is an incredible game. We were free them up and they nearly made the best comeback I've ever seen. But for this season, let's go and watch this 7-1 FA Cup final against Leicester. I mean, what a disappointment for Leicester. A great, obviously, season to get to the FA Cup final. But to be thumped 7-1, that is not good at all. As it is going to be Bruno Fernandes finding Martial out on the right, not where I expected him at all. He's going to cut it back into Rashford who leaves it off the post and Bruno Fernandes tucks it in and a, well I mean we started scoring inside of eight minutes this final was never going to be a hard one was it realistically as you can see nap set pieces there and to be honest they are they are basic but they are effective person at the near post equals a goal Brandon Williams getting some game time in the cup I almost do like to see it to be fair as Rice plays a great ball through and gets his assist in the final and we are 3-0 up inside of 14 minutes when you're doing this in a cup final you know you're about to absolutely cook and when we've got Brandon Williams, who's actually not looking half bad here, with a ball over the top, which would have been offside to Rashford, but Fernandez wasn't, we are playing absolutely luxury style of football right now. As we go into the first half, it looks to appear to be, this is going to be, what, five goals? Absolutely mental, possibly even six. wan down the right, cuts it back in the middle. Again, very lucky. It seems to be an issue with this game sometimes. If you can get to this byline and literally just fizz it across the line, either there's a mistake or something happens. It is very, very interesting. As is Leicester going to get a goal now? It possibly could be. Drewsby Hall over... I mean, it's a great ball over the top into Harvey Barnes, and it's a great finish. To be fair to him, we can't really we can't really complain about that. Obviously, Leicester City would have been in the championship this season as well because we are playing on the up-to-date database. So to get to, to get to a cup final for them is a massive accomplishment. I don't know if they went up as well. We will see next season, but still a very good season for them. As Martial tucks away, what I believe is the sixth. We've now got the seventh goal coming as Maguire goes long out wide, 
into Marcus Rashford, into an overlap on Bruno Fernandes. Is there a man in the middle? It doesn't matter because he goes alone, thumps it into the top right corner in a 7-1 win. So then season two of the transfers has been completed and we have got a couple of pages to show you. The first one is going to be one player we're going to bring in, which is probably what you imagined. Big Rasmus from Atalanta for £20 million. Now, we will look at this guy in a second because he's not developed potentially to the best which he could have done in that first season. But I still believe in him that we can turn him around. In terms of players going out, we have still got some on this page here. You can see some more loans coming in down here. It's going to be Dean Henderson going to PSG, believe it or not, for 500k. We cannot get any more for him. At the end of the day, his contract was coming up anyway. I just wanted him gone so we didn't completely lose him. Also, Polistri going out on loan just so he just continues that development and doesn't rot on the bench, basically. But th this is going to be one of the star signings, Rasmus here. Now, he's not developing to the max of the max, which he could have been in that first season, but still getting quite a good striker. And to be honest with you, even if he doesn't develop into the man we know he can become and the goal scorer that he can become, he would still be a very good option to have on the bench to bring on because his attributes already are quite good. And for the fact of paying him 80 grand a week and him obviously only being 20 million pounds we can't really complain and going over to the next page we're going to talk about the the elephant in the room just look at you know, the, 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 the big player the big player because i don't want to talk about all of these when i know you can see big bastoni from inter milan for 100 million pounds now we know exactly what this guy can do he's not naturally the quickest but he makes it up in so many different areas great tackling great teamwork great determination great bravery great natural fitness and overall just a fantastic center back with tons of experience played in some big games and again only age 25 in terms of players leaving here there's no real standout ones apart from this guy going to atletico madrid harry Maguire. For 2.5 million pounds finally managed to get rid of him still not managed to get rid of De Gea by the way which um you know it, it's just like you can't it's so hard to get rid of some players on this game I swear to god but everyone else that's been loaned out is simply to continue their development and hopefully if they come back good and good they can get into the team and actually have a shot the likes of Garnacho is doing it really well at the moment and he's not even been forced to go out on loan because he is performing in that main team but let's go over to this second season with the new look team just going to be like this so as you can see not too much has changed obviously apart from the new goalkeeper Dallo, Varan, Martinez, Shaw, Rice, Casemiro, Sancho, Fernandez, Anthony and Rashford so De Gea actually dropped to the bench right now as we are going to welcome in obviously Bilal who didn't start he probably started quite a few games last season to obviously earn that place from De Gea in my opinion Bastoni can definitely work his way into this team as well and it's just going to be a really fun season to see if we can improve because well not really improve but just maintain it because we had a quadruple winning season so let's go over to that second season hopefully at least bring home a couple of trophies well, just when you think it couldn't get any better, it clearly does, as we actually managed to bring home five trophies this season. That is right, five trophies. We are filling this trophy cabinet up quicker than what we've probably done since, well, definitely since what we've done since Ferguson left. Very rapid bringing these trophies in, as it is going to be five trophies in one season, as I did state before. A Super Cup, a Premier League, an FA Cup against Leicester, the Carabao Cup against Palace, and also the Community Shield against Liverpool. Could have been six in one season, but unfortunately, we do get bailed out or bailed out knocked out in the champions league semi-finals against real madrid now there has been a bit of a knockoff or, or sort of drop off should i say in terms of the goals 96 on this occasion obviously it was over 100 last season we are still ranking the best and absolutely dominated the premier league i mean look at the point difference absolutely incredible very good defensively did pick up quite a few red cards this season so I don't know if that was the attackers and possibly that's why this number's lower if they were suspended. But overall, still a great season. Nevertheless, you can't really complain. And going over to the squad right now, we are going to go ahead and have a little look as we are going to be seeing Bruno Fernandes coming in. We've actually the top goal scorer, which is very, very interesting. Um... 33 goals from him. We've got Rasmus with 23, so we're actually having quite a good season for him. Marcus Rashford with 19, 18 for Varane, again, the set-piece demon. Declan Rice with 14, 10 for Eriksen, Casemiro with 10, 9 for Garnacho, who's still playing very well. 8 for Martial, Bastoni with 8 as well, 7 for Fred, and 6 for McTominay. In terms of the assists, we're going to have 36 for Bruno Fernandes, who blatantly was the best player. He had one hell of a season. 17 for Rashford, Jadon Sancho with 16, 12 for Eriksen, Declan Rice with 11, 8 for Garnacho, wan Basaka with 7, 7 for Casemiro, and it keeps on going down and down. So still a great season. We've won more trophies by scoring less goals. So I'm not that annoyed about it, but obviously it's a little bit interesting that Bruno Fernandes is getting more goals when it was clearly the attacking attackers. I know his class as an attacking player, but he's more of an attacking midfield player. So that is very interesting to see nevertheless. And hopefully we can sort of 
dig into that and understand a bit more about it. But going into the next season, we have, we we're going to have, oh my God, we're going to have 109 million pounds to spend, which is absolutely incredible amounts of money. And I will definitely be looking where we can strengthen. In fact, we might even have a little look now just to see what we can do. Um, but in fact, we will do that. So realistically, this team, it is looking very, very good. But we'll do the filter by best 11, see if anything changes. Um, it's just Bastoni coming in, actually, which is interesting. Realistically, the back line's okay for now. Obviously, Dallow's down to a two-star. wan is exactly the same. So if that does if that does become a good right-back on the market, I might consider a little swap going on there. These two in midfield are quite good. Um, possibly look to sell a couple of the older players, bring in some youngsters. In terms of the wingers, we seem to be okay, to be honest with you. Bruno Fernandes is doing a flawless job in there. We don't really need to worry about that. The attacker situation is interesting because obviously Rashford didn't have the best season. Um, Hoyland's doing okay, but not incredible. It's his first season. We've got to give him time. So realistically, it's actually quite hard to decide where we need to actually sign players in. So I think it's going to be a matter of time during that transfer window and sort of seeing exactly what we can do. But going over to the schedule, we will treat ourselves and watch one of these games. Again, Leicester in another cup final. We can't watch again because we beat him in the last one. Let's go ahead and just watch. It's not many goals at all, but I'll tell you what we'll do. We will go ahead and we will watch this. Watch this Carabao Cup final just to see where the goal come from. Bruno Fernandes, no, no surprise there. A 1-0 win inside of 28 minutes. So, I mean, quite gutting for Palace, obviously getting all the way to a final, but and it is a set piece practically in the penalty box. Typical Bruno Fernandes, absolute set piece magician. And to be honest, it was a very comfortable win. Dominated possession, dominated the XG, a very much deserved Carabao Cup final. But let's go into that third transfer window and see exactly who we can bring in to strengthen. Well, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Season three is probably going to be the most dramatic season of transfers we are going to have in this video because it is something else. As we do manage to sell a lot of players and some of them weren't actually my decision. So, in terms of right backs, we actually sold both of them simply because the offers were absolutely incredible for the players they are. Juan Pesaka wanted to leave. Dallow didn't, but I wanted to sell Dallow anyway because he wasn't really performing to the best. He goes to Arsenal for 44 million. Aaron Juan Pesaka goes to Tottenham, 37 million pounds. Casemiro didn't want to sell him, but he wanted to leave. He wanted a new challenge. So he got a challenge. Please, please understand, he wanted a challenge. So he goes to PSG for £26.5 million. Pounds. De Gea goes to Monaco, who have poached three of our players now for £26.5 million. Pounds. We've got Alanga going to Leicester for £14.2 million. Pounds. And do you know what? Although we've got a lot of players being sold there, that does mean one thing. We've got a ton of money coming in. And we already had £109 million. That easily bumps up past £200 million. Pounds. And oh boy, did we strengthen, as you're going to see right now, as even more players come out, which we are going to quickly talk about. Likes of Ericsson, these players, again, I did not want to go. They just wanted to leave. Ericsson goes to Chelsea on the free. Fred goes to Porto for 8.2 million. And Hannibal goes to Udinese for 2.5 million pounds. However, it's not all doom and gloom. As we do bring in Wrench from Ajax, as you can see, a very, very, very flexible defender can play anywhere across the back line. Still very young, age 22, and has some very good attributes to sort of kick things off. And realistically, it's just a good sign. And we've lost a lot of defenders in this transfer window. So bringing one in that can play right back very comfortably and also centre back sort of kills two birds with one stone. Going over to the next position is going to be Diogo Costa from Porto for £53 million. I did state how much I wanted this guy, and I think it's a sign that could happen in real life. But in real life, we need to be quicker. We need to start acting on transfers a lot more rapid because we let players get so sort of known that we're after them, and they just get poached from other teams that don't mess about. It's just, it's very annoying. It happened with Gakpo, for example, with Liverpool. But overall, this is a goalkeeper now that is going to set us up easily for the rest of this rebuild. 25, year, 25 years of age, fantastic already. And now we've got an even better backup keeper, really, than De Gea in Bilal. Obviously, De Gea now suddenly starting to drop off more and more as he gets older. Going over to the next player, that is going to be Gavi from Barcelona. And to be honest, it was a bit of a steal, in my opinion. £62 million, pounds, tons of potential. He can play anywhere in the midfield, sort of centralised or higher up. Um, so, for example, 
He can't really play. He can play Volante, kind of, but he's a little bit up pushed up. So him and Bruno can share that attack and roll. And also he can play on the work on the, on the right wing, which I don't know. I've never played him there, but it's interesting to see if the AI decides to, because technically off his current ability, he's probably going to be, he would be better than Anthony. So it will be interesting to see exactly what happens there. But you can't really turn your nose down. When you get offered Gavi for 60 million pounds, you take it. It's not a lot of money at all for a player like him. And for a player that's the age of 20, you've got him for like sort of 11, if not 12 years. And then the last player, a player I've never signed and definitely cost me a fair buck. That is going to be Kenneth Taylor from Ajax. And I just saw this guy and I was like, he looks ridiculously balanced. He's pr pretty much the opposite of Gavi in the sense of instead of him playing better attacking, he plays better defensively and also in the central area. So this guy can play that Volante really, really well. He's got tons of potential. Again, only 23 years of age. So we're signing players that have got 10, 11 year lifespans in them, which is pretty much key to when you're doing a rebuild of a club because you don't want to sign players that are like 34 all the time. So realistically, I think this is actually a really good signing um, and suits that Volante role really, really well. And going over to the tactics, we are going to be seeing a few changes coming in right now. So it is going to be Costa gets in there right away. Wrench, Varane, Stoney, Shaw, Rice, Taylor, Sancho, Fernandez, Anthony, and Marcus Rashford. And if you look at, if you look at the bench now, it's getting more and more strong as we go into it. Now, realistically, I possibly should have saved a little bit more money because we haven't got as many players. But if we look, for example, in this position, we've got cover in that position. On the wings, we've got cover as well. In this position, obviously, we've got Gavi. When it comes to the deeper roles, that's probably where we're lacking the most because, obviously, if Gavi plays, then we've only got one backup. That's probably where we're really missing it. Did not mean to do that. Um, but then, obviously, at right back, we've got... It's quite limited, to be fair. We've got Wrench. Lindelof can play there, I suppose. Centre-back-wise, we've got Lindelof and Martinez, even McTominay if needed. Goalkeeper, obviously, we're covered. And left-back, we are covered as well. So we should be fine in this next season. But just realistically, it would have been nice to have a few more options. But we'll go into this third season now and see exactly how good this team is after spending probably about 270 million. Well, the third season has been simulated. And I always say this, when you make so many sign-ins, you lose so many players you're bound to have a window like it and or not a window a sort of season like it and we have had what i like to call the drop-off season this is a crucial part in any save where you have that one bad season you now either recover it and it goes incredibly well or you start to completely fall off and fall off which hopefully we don't do but we do win two trophies nevertheless being the fa cup against leicester we seem to be matching against them in every cup final and also the community shield against manchester city now in terms of everything else, we've got a second place Premier League finish, which realistically isn't too bad, um, as we have won the other two. Not the best display in the Carabao Cup, and also, again, Real Madrid just being too much for us to deal with. What is Liverpool's team looking like, though? Still got Jurgen Klopp, and they have got a team of Kelleher, Trent, okay, Musiala, Bowen, Nunes, Diaz, um, Tyler Morton, Jossa, Neves, um, Van Dijk, Robertson, McAllister, Rodrigo de Paul. Kevin De Bruyne at 34. Um, they've got quite a good team, nevertheless, anyway. They've got a decent team, so I can understand why they are, you know, pretty much Premier League champions. In terms of the goals scored, still under the 100 mark, so we've still obviously got a little bit of a goal scoring issue right there. Still the best in terms of defending, which is good to see. And in terms of the team stats, Southampton getting a couple here. Best pass completion and possession coming in. But we have the most goals, fewer shots against... The most shots at 774, most dribbles made, we seem to be dominating, and still the best defensive record. In terms of the squad, though, we are going to be seeing, this is good to see, Marcus Rashford with 42 goals. So he is definitely coming back and, you know, being that main goal scorer in the team. Bruno Fernandes coming in with 34, 16 for Kenneth Taylor. We're going to have Hoyland coming in with 16, Declan Rice coming in with 14, Garnacho with 11, 10 for Gavi, Varane with 9, and 5 for Anthony. So... After this part here, after the 42 and 34, there is a bit of a drop off, not even any players in the 20s, whereas in the first season, obviously it was absolutely mental, but I'm hoping this is something we can recover going into obviously this next transfer window and this next season. In terms of the assists, it's going to be probably what you're expecting. Bruno Fernandes with 32, 17 for Gavi, Sancho with 17, 13 for Declan Rice, Marcus Rashford coming in with 11, 10 for Garnacho, Kenneth Taylor with 7, Malashi with 7, 6 for Luke Shaw, and then again, still some players coming in with 5 and 6s, so we are seeing quite a lot of assists coming in. And going over to the squad, we actually look at these contracts now, so we're in 2025, so we need to make sure, oh yeah, we need to make sure we get deals. Actually, this one's been done, isn't it? 
That means he's gone on the free, I imagine, when we were sim simulating the season. That is not good to see at all. Um, he has not gone, luckily. So, we need, that is not good news at all, because I really want to keep him. Um, but we couldn't get him to agree a contract the previous season. That is the risk you always run. But we need to get a contract, obviously, given to Justin. Also to the likes, anyone in 2026. So, Lindelof, Marshall, we're going to try and sell... Fernandez needs to get whatever he wants because he has been absolutely incredible. I think every season he's put up at least 30 plus assists, so he literally cannot be sold. Um, Malasia and Shaw, we probably don't need both, to be honest with you. Um, possibly get rid of one of those. And Lindelof, I'm going to think about because possibly we keep him even for backup as he has been. Um, or we sell him and bring in a slightly younger backup variant, but realistically... We're going to see where it takes us because that is not going to be an easy transfer window. And I'm hoping that we have no sort of no sort of issues keeping Justin, keeping Anthony. Although Anthony's not actually been that good, to be honest. Um, if we look at him right now, he's being used mostly as a substitute, to be honest. He's really not developed into anything special. So to be honest with you, I'm open to offers for Anthony. I didn't realize how poor he was actually doing. Not been the best of the best at all. Um, going over to the schedule, though, we're not going to watch any highlights on this occasion because all the all the finals are quite close, to be honest with you. Um, obviously, a 3-0 there in the semi-final. A 1-0 against Leicester, who just can't catch a break against us, matching us up in the cup finals. Um, but overall, if, as you can see right now, a lot, a lot of green results coming in. We are losing the odd game here and there against teams which maybe we should be beating. New, what are Newcastle looking like now? We always need to see this because they're team is usually nuts and it is so they've got Zanzu, Mario, Danea, Van der Ven, Guavardio, Torreya, Gamerez, Jolinton, Maximin, Trincao, Porter up top and then obviously on the bench they've got there anyone good on the bench? Botman um, obviously their player already anybody else? Anybody else? Kim Min Jay, Isaac, Casillo, Thomas Lamar. There you go. That seems more like Newcastle. Absolutely ridiculous. But going into this next season, we are going to have a total of £62 million to spend. So not as much as what we're used to having. But again, it all depends on if anyone goes out. But I'm going to do my best to just try and bring more players in just to bolster this squad a little bit and add a little bit more depth. So, not too many transfers happened in this window. Um, to be honest with you, no one else actually gets sold either. Actually, I believe you can see, as it's going to be Palistri, unfortunately, not wanting a new deal, and he goes out on the free completely to Sampdoria on the free. But we do bring in two more players, and yes, we did use installments because we didn't have that much of a budget. The first one is going to be a slightly more experienced player. This is more of a player to do something now, not for the future, because as I said, we want that recovery season now where we don't completely start falling down that dark path of having everything, having one bad season, and get worse and worse and worse. Um, just basically what's happened to United in real life. But we are going to pick up Serge Nabry, who can play on the wing, up front, left and right on the wing, that is, by the way. Again, he's going to be 30 years of age, but he is absolutely incredible. He offers a lot already. That's what we're after right now. He's quite quick on the ball, great finishing for a winger as well. So realistically, if this guy plays on the wing or up top, he can easily put the ball in the back of the net. And he's always a key player, which I like to sign. He's always not the youngest when I pick him up. Obviously, 30 isn't young at all. But in today's football, he's at least got sort of three or four years in him. And I'm hoping he can be the player which turns up and chips in with the goals and assists because that is one area which we've not been as consistent in since that first season. And then the next player is going to be to replace Scalvini from Atalanta. And this guy, again, absolutely incredible. Could partner alongside Bastoni being a complete Italian back line as he's 22 years of age, already an elite centre-back, 15 tackling, 14 exhilaration, 14 pace, not the quickest, but again, makes up for it in different areas such as anticipation, concentration, determination, stamina, quite a fit centre-back as well. Also quite tall, which also does help, to be fair, across that back line. Not bad pass at either, and just a centre-back, which I feel, even if he doesn't get into the team right away, because he is 22, he's going to easily grow into that team eventually, and will replace, obviously, the likes of, which we are going to see, eventually the likes of Varane, who I believe should be going anyway. Um... He is going to Madrid, so he will actually be gone by the end of next season. So that's one player down. Um, I believe Martinez is actually still quite young. We will have a little look at him. Martinez is going to be 28. So again, he is quite young, but he's only going to get older. So we do sort of need to facilitate for that anyway. And this is going to be the new team. Let's filter by best 11 and see what happens. 
It is going to be Scalvini instantly coming in. So that back line is going to be Costa, Wrench, Scalvini, Bastoni, Shaw, Taylor, Rice, Sancho, Fernandez, Gavi, and Rashford. Gavi actually playing on that right-hand side right now, which is very interesting to see because obviously I was signing him more to play in a Volante or in the AM role. But we'll see how well he does on the right-hand side. Obviously, the bench is looking very, very strong right now. Some real good talent on there. I'm hoping that Nabry gets some game time as well. Really hope he does get some game time. I will check on him halfway through the season, make sure he's actually getting a chance to shine. But let's go into this for transfer not transfer window for season and see exactly if we can see what we can recover because realistically the, the previous season wasn't that great i do want to quickly say though guys if you're enjoying today's video please do leave a like drop a little subscription on the channel as well and also leave a little comment on what team you want to see next being rebuilt or also possibly a manager you wish for me to create a tactic for an fm23 but let's go into this fourth season and see how well we've done so, the fourth season has been simulated, and to be honest, it is a massive success as we win the Champions League, which we have been struggling in the last couple of seasons against Bayern. We also win the Premier League and the FA Cup, making it a triple winning season. And slowly, we recover and back into that consistent, as mad as it sounds, quadruple winning sort of team. The goal scoring situation has definitely been solved. Don't know what has exactly caused that, but we're definitely going to have a little look there. As 131 goals get scored in the Premier League, 35 conceded. Again, picking up a few red cards so i'm going to tell you right now if you want to eliminate that you can take it off the tackle harder because that is clearly what is going on there but nevertheless this tactic is absolutely sensational the fact that in the first season we won was it the quadruple second season five trophies absolutely nuts and also we're not making tweaks to this tactic whereas if you're actually playing yourself you would tweak it as you go on so obviously the ai gets to know how you play but that aside, realistically, a fantastic season. Dominant in the league as well, 96 points compared to Liverpool with 78. In terms of the team stats, we're going to be featuring in almost all of them. Most points, most goals, fewer shots against, most shots, 822. Most dribbles we were incredibly consistent in. I mean, we have been ranked one in this and every time we've checked. And this one's going to be over 100 compared to Newcastle with 848. Fewest conceded coming in at 35 as well. Quite a big change up from Liverpool coming in at 42. And in terms of the actual schedule, let's go and have a little look at that first. That is going to be any interesting games we can watch here. I'm sure there's going to be one or two. Let's go ahead and watch that Champions League final. It's going to be a 2-0 final as Fernandes plays the ball in a box and Scalvini absolutely leaps up literally above everyone. Quite a powerful header, to be fair. Absolute bullet header. And the second goal comes still within the first half as Martinez finds himself playing left back, I believe, into Taylor, who wins the flick on into a dominant Marcus Rashford be rude not to have a little look at exactly how good this game was when we did win at 7-1 against Tottenham in the FA Cup final as it's a little bit lucky with that first goal um this Tottenham team has made some very good silence by the way I would like to add um but still clearly not as good as, as the silence we've made as we do thump them 7-1 in a cup final absolute humiliation there as Taylor I don't know what the game's doing there a little bit glitchy on the game this has been happening a lot in my highlights recently as you can sort of see what happens as Taylor plays it through into Rashford who tucks it into the right hand corner very very interesting. Um, Gaffey playing on that right-hand side, who appears to be doing quite a good job. He's going to cut it back, go sort of solo here. Harry's on going into Fernandez, who hits it into the top right corner. Anyone knows in the comments, why is the game doing that? I've not changed PC. My PC's running completely fine. And randomly, I pick a game out at random. Like the last game was fine. This game isn't. Very interesting. I don't know why it is. As Shung Min Son is going to get sort of a consolation in the end, as it is going to get cleared, but goes back to skip onto Lopez into the edge. He takes a touch, and to be honest, I'm not going to hate it. Possibly we could have got out to him quicker, but it's an absolute piece of individual quality. We can't hate it. It's a great finish. Scalvini wins it back there. Taylor right over the top. No messing about. Into Rashford for in behind and no chance for the Tottenham goalkeeper. That's one thing I've noticed with this tactic as well. It can play very short passes, but to be honest, it's not afraid to go direct and it's definitely not shy of scoring set pieces as we've got a beautiful angle of that from Bruno Fernandes into Scalvini. Bastoni very far pushed up now into Luke Shaw, into Taylor who takes a little touch, a great ball through into Rashford. And can we just... Can we just take a second to appreciate how good Taylor has been this game? Absolutely incredible. As Garnacho Nearly gets the last goal. It's a decent save. However, we do win it back into Rashford, out on the edge, into McTominay, into the centre who gets his goal in a very comfortable 7-1 win. But going into the last season, we have got we've got £175 million to spend, um, which is quite interesting. 
it's quite a fair bit of money we've got to spend. Obviously, we've got contracts to renew and things like that. But we are absolutely loaded with money. So I'm going to try my best not to go completely insane and sign the whole world. But we'll see exactly what goes on in this fifth transfer window. Is realistically, going over to the tactics page, we could do with a... I'm trying to think what we could even do with because the team looks incredible. Obviously, we've got Wrench, Martinez, Bastoni, Scalvini, wherever he is in this page. He is definitely still at the club, though. We'll just make sure... He's still here. I'm just making sure nothing's happened. Um, Luke Shaw, Rice, Taylor, Fernandez, Sancho, Gavi, Rashford. Yeah, we've got an incredible team. Um, and the bench also is really, really good. So let's just go into this fifth transfer window and sensibly try and sign some players. Well, this is going to be the first page and we have made some fantastic signings as we are going to see the transfer go through for Rafael Varane on the free to Atletico Madrid. To be fair, he, I believe, getting on for like 35 now. So at the end of the day, it's a bit of a loss. But we have, however, replaced him and brought in Levi Colwell, which we are going to have a look at in a second. We also bring in Rafael Liao from Milan for £67 million, which is quite a good price. That was actually his release clause. And also Desiree Douai from Rennes for £77 million. And on the next page, the last one is going to be Henrique Araujo from Bayern for 122 A lot of instalments made, but considering this is our last season, I wanted to go out with a bang, a big bang, and leave them in the best situation possible. And that is why we turn to this guy, because it's a player I've never actually signed. But I looked at him. He was very highly scouted, very highly recommended. And he looks incredible, man. I mean, we're talking about a player with 17 finishing at the age of 25. Great composure, good pens. Again, not the quickest, but it's not really an issue in this system because we can feed him. The wingers can feed him. Bruno Fernandes can feed him. And realistically, he looks a bit like a young Ronaldo. Being honest, I don't want to overhype the guy. I can't really say that after comparing him to CR7. But he looks absolutely incredible, to be honest with you. Um, so that's why we picked him up. Then go to Chelsea and obviously pick up Levi Colwell. Well, you all know who this guy is by now. A fantastic talent, quite a quick centre-back as well. So something that I definitely wanted to focus on, bringing in a slightly quicker option because obviously the centre-backs that have been signed and are absolutely incredible, but they're not the quickest. So having one that can do that is also quite an advantage. 16 acceleration, 16 jumping, 16 pace, 16 decision, 17 composure, decent tackling, 24 years of age. You can't really complain at all. Going over to the next player is going to be Rafael Liao. I don't even really need to show you this because we know how good this guy is. 28 years of age. Again, could have signed him when he was a little bit younger, but there he would have cost us absolutely millions. Way, way more than 67 that we paid for him. And he's still got fantastic attributes. Absolutely rapid. 18 acceleration, 18 flair, 16 off the ball, 17 dribbling, 16 crossing, 17 first touch. Great passing, great technique. And again, he can play up top if needed. And this guy, I'll be very surprised if he has a bad season because he is absolutely incredible. And the last player is going to be a player I know, but I've never signed. That is going to be Zoué from Rennes. Now, this is a player who can pretty much do it all in that midfield. Only 22 years of age. And again... Just going to be a player we can sort of build up through the years. Already quite pre-built, though, to be fair, as he does feature some very good stats, as you can see in the green. Good dribbling, good first touch, good passing, good technique. Pretty much the perfect attributes you would want in a midfield player. Good anticipation, good decisions, great bit of flair as well, and very agile with some decent stamina. And we've got to take into consideration he is only 22, so still got so many years, so many years to improve, and that's hopefully what he can do. So going over to this last season, this is going to be the best team on paper. It's going to be Costa, Wrench, Scalvini, Bastoni, Martinez at left back, Rice, Taylor, Gavi, Fernandez, Rashford, and Araujo. Now, obviously, throughout the season, this can change drastically because the bench we have got now is absolutely incredible. We've got Bilal, Colwell, Sancho, Hoyland, Luke Shaw, Due, Nabri, Malasia, Garnacho, Martial, Brandon Williams, Anthony, Liao, Lindelof, and McTominay. I want to quickly say, there are like four players that I don't know how how they've lasted so long at this club. But to be honest, they've either been impossible to sell or they've just been okay for backup. They are going to be, obviously, the likes of Anthony Martial, Brandon Williams, 
Victor Lindelof and Scott McTominay. They've not really done anything too wrong. Obviously, the one game we watched that featured Brandon Williams, he was actually really good. I don't know how well he's doing now. He's not anything special, but he's also not that bad. So we may as well keep him for a backup in case. But um, realistically, this team, yeah, this team on paper can go up against anyone. I mean, the back line's well-class, the midfield's well-class, the front sort of free here are well-class, and also the striker is absolutely incredible. And the bench can match it. So let's go into this last season i'm honestly hoping i'm seriously hoping we can at least bring home I'm, I'm gonna say it at least three trophies so we finish the last season in style let's just say that as we bring home five trophies that being the champions league against liverpool the super cup against benfica the premier league against everyone the carabao cup against brentford and also the community shield against liverpool we were one final off bringing home six trophies as we do lose this fa cup against arsenal in terms of the goal scoring situation we're still averaging over 100 goals a season and still conceding the least out of anyone which is really really good to see in terms of the league table we don't even really need to talk about it 98 points compared to liverpool coming in with 86 points I want to quickly see what City's team is looking like. They've got Julian Nagelsmann in. We can see they've got Kimmich as well. They have got a... Oh, I don't like it. I don't like that team at all, really. Um, obviously, they've got a lot of players here on the bench. Let's just say that. They've obviously got your Haaland, your Foden, your Silvers, Edison, Rodri, Pino, Havertz, Kimmich. But that team there... I don't like the formation that much, really. Not for City. It suits a lot of teams, but not really City. So I can see why they had quite a poor finish for them. But we're not going to complain as we had a great season, as you can see here, by some of the stats. And I've got to see how much money we would have had for this last season. We would have had, or the next season, we would have £184 million. And I think the next thing, it's only going to be polite if we go and watch some of these games. Because, yeah... This season is pretty much flawless. Very few losses coming in at all from any of the games. So let's go ahead and pick out some of these finals to watch. Um, we'll go ahead and we will watch this one. This has got some drama in it. A 3-2 win as it is going to be. Is that a Bruno Fernandes 102nd minute winner in the Champions League final? Um, so we are going to watch this game because obviously there's quite a bit of drama in it realistically. As you won the lap here inside of 13 minutes and it is going to be a header from Scalvini. Bruno Fernandes and Scalvini, I wish you could see how many goals have come just from them two because let's just be real. They are linking up absolutely fantastic as it is going to be Dogi down the left hand side goes alone. Okay, I personally believe, is it Bilal playing this game? I can't even click. It is going to be Bilal. I believe he should have done better in that situation, in my opinion. As we are going to, however, bounce back here with Wrench down the right-hand side. He's going to go all the way to the byline, cross it into Marcus Rashford, gets lucky again. How many goals have we seen where that happens? You go down the right-hand side, the AI can't seem to deal with it. They either have a, de like a deflection goes against them or something happens. They can't seem to deal with it at all. As we are going to see the game have a bit of a bit of a moment again, which is always interesting. I might have to reinstall it for the next video. As Critch Cavalo, I can't even, I'm going to try and say that name. Please, can someone educate me in the comments how you say that name? Because I know I butcher it every single time. And I don't like butchering names too much. But the winner does come here. In the 120, 120, 102nd minute, as it is going to be a Rauhau, goes to this byline again, pisses the back into Garnacho, into Fernandez, and that is a beautiful winner. I feel a little bit sorry for Brentford here, but fair play to him for getting into a cup final. But we do win at 7 0 at home, or not at home, but obviously at the stadium in Carabao Cup. Sort of, it's just brutal. It's just brutal. I mean, 16 minutes in and we're already a goal up with an injured Declan Rice as well. Don't know why he's still on the field. Lindelof gets some game time as well, which is always cool to see. A ball over the top into a Rauhau. And that is why we brought him in because with that type of finishing, that's what you can expect. He's not really going to miss if you put him in front of the goal. So as long as you can feed him, that's what you can expect. And talking about being fed, it's going to be Luke Shaw assisting his English teammate Colwell in what is going to be a very comfortable 3 0 lead to start with. As Anthony now does the same to Scalvini. And this is more of a set piece through the over the looks of it, as we are scoring endless set pieces with this tactic. As we go down the right hand side here to McTominay, he's going to cut it back into Garnacho back across into Due, which is very good to see. Obviously, the new centre mid getting some goals as well, as long as some game time. And it's nice to see him sort of thrive. Lindelof back into Scalvini. Lindelof, I believe, playing right back on this occasion. A ball over the top into Scalvini. A very direct approach there. Cuts it back into Kenneth Taylor. And this player again, what a sign by the way. He cost a lot of money. I know that. I know, I know how much we spent on the guy, but realistically, he has been good for us every single season. We can't complain at all. Was that possibly, nearly was a pen. Rasha cuts it back into McTominay and we are so we're playing ridiculous football absolutely flawless football 
And we'll just watch this game because there's a lot of goals and it's against a fairly decent Ajax side. This is obviously in the Champions League sort of knockouts, initial knockouts, as Bruno Fernandes does tuck away the first goal. Gavi then plays it through to Rashford on the right-hand side. We seem to be targeting this right-hand side a lot. And why not? Because it always results in a goal. Rashford feeds Bruno Fernandes, who actually scored, I believe, three goals in this game, if not four. As we are going to see another set piece there, Bruno Fernandes and Scalvini. It's like the De Bruyne Harlem partnership. Absolutely flawless, it seems. As Scalvini plays through Rice into Bruno Fernandes, into Rafael Leal. Glad to see him get some game time. Outside of the foot, into Marcus Rashford. And we have put together, I'm going to say it, probably the best team in Europe. The way we're playing, the goals we're scoring is absolutely flawless. As Leal cuts it back now into, into Bruno, into Martinez, back into Bruno, who's going to take a touch and hit it and... He is playing at his best. This is prime Bruno Fernandes. And obviously, we've got quite a Portuguese influence now on this team. I believe we've got three players that are Portuguese in this team, which is quite cool to see. Malachia now building up through the middle, ball over the top into Bruno Fernandes, who is simply not putting a foot wrong this season. Hasn't put a foot wrong since any of the seasons. Constant 30 plus assists, 20 plus goals a season. Really the best player on this entire save, in my opinion. As Garnacho again, is going to go alone on this one. That's four players. That, no, he's not Portuguese. Got that wrong. I always think it's Portuguese. Um, but overall, a fantastic season. And again, against a very, very good Ajax team. And realistically, we didn't put a foot wrong the entire season. So let's go and see what we've actually done with this team. So we can see here exactly what we have won. And to be honest, there is going to be a lot to read out. I'm just going to let you have a little eye, little feast of it, a little look at it, because what we have done is absolutely incredible at the end of the day. I mean, 2020, this season here is four trophies. This season here is five. This season here is a couple of trophies. This season here is four. This season here is going to be one, two, three. Is that six? One, two, three, four, five, six in that. I mean, yeah, we we have really turned this club around, man. We have The team we have left them with is absolutely incredible as well. And like I said, it's just really fun. It's, it's fun doing rebuilds. When you're rebuilding your team, it's that extra little bit of fun, you know? So I've had an absolute blast doing this rebuild. And please let me know in the comments as well if you want me to start including the rebuild save files on the Patreon. Do let me know. Again, thank you to everyone that has signed up to that, whether you've been a member for a day or a year. It doesn't really matter, but seriously, much love for that. It does mean a lot. If you have enjoyed today's video, please do leave a little like on it. Definitely subscribe and leave a comment on what team you wish to see rebuilt next. And also, any managers or tactic formations you want to see featured on this channel because we are absolutely killing it right now. But enjoy your weekend and I'll see you in the next video.